person that's here, for visitors that are here today. Lord, thank you. Lord, we uh, we know that, that no one is here by accident. You have drawn us here by the power of your Holy Spirit. And I ask your Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts, each one of us today, to our minds, our, our hearts, that we would be drawn closer to you, that we wouldn't kind of just go through the Sunday morning routine, but that we would be engaged as we think of the scriptures that we are reading and as we, we sing praise to you in the songs, Lord, and as you speak to us from your word uh, later on. Thank you. And, and Lord, thank you that we have a time to fellowship together uh, following this and have lunch together and, and enjoy being your children in celebration of our Heavenly Father because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Thank you that we have the technology to broadcast it to those that maybe can't be here. And we pray that all of that would work well and strong and consistently throughout the service. We love you, Lord. We need you. We give you this time. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand. God's going to lead us in the call to worship. It is Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7a. Let's stand and be called to worship by God's word. Good morning. But come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are in his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Go come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Please greet one another in the name of the Lord as we get ready to sing for <laughs> Good morning to you again. Oh, you're welcome. That's really nice. When are you leaving? Up till the middle of May, sometime. maybe 1st of June. Oh, really sure. oh okay. Jamie Lynn's coming in. Good morning. Good morning. Jamie Lynn's coming in. Good morning. Good morning. Today's her birthday, right? Yeah. Today's her birthday. And, um, Christine's coming in and we call it help. And she's back. Morning. 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 All right, 
Let's uh, come together and sing praise to the Lord.
Amen. You may be seated. Please join me in the corporate confession page. It is the Belgic Confession number 20. We believe that God, who is perfectly merciful and just, sent his Son to assume that nature in which the disobedience was committed, to make satisfaction in the same, and to bear the punishment of sin by his most bitter passion and death. God therefore manifested his justice against his Son when he laid our iniquities upon him and poured forth his mercy and goodness on us who were guilty and worthy of condemnation out of clear and perfect love, giving his Son unto death for us, and raising him for our justification, that through him we might obtain immortality and life eternal. Please join me in the sign of prayer. Believers in Christ, hear this good news. God, out of his mere good pleasure, from all eternity, elected you to everlasting life. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit's covenant of grace has delivered you out of the state of sin and misery and brought you into a state of salvation by a Redeemer. That Redeemer's name is Jesus Christ. Live today in Him. Let all believers in Christ shout, Amen. 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 invite the kids to come forward. Actually, you guys, well, go ahead and sit down. Go ahead and sit down. All right. Miss Lisa is changing the screen for us because we have a song to help us learn the memory verse. Okay, so come down here where you can see. Yeah, thanks, Jason. All right, and, and you all can learn it as well. All right, Lisa, go ahead. Recognize it? Channel 25 to 27. Thank you. 
you guys sing that. I can hear you singing it as, as well. My so, daughter. what? Oh. So I will, uh, I will put that video on our Facebook group so your moms and dads can, can look at it and you guys can, can sing through it and memorize our verse for the next two months. We're going to do that verse for two months. But what did that song tell us? What does that verse tell us? What happened to Jesus on the cross? Owen? He died for us. What for what? What do you take away? Take away our sin, right? Um, and then I'm going to talk about this during the sermon today, but it, this is important. He then he was in the he was buried. And then what happened on Sunday? He rose again. And whoever believes in him shall what? Shall, shall never die. Shall live. Yeah. All right, who made you guys? What else did he make? Including that bug that was flying around during the video. Did you see that? There's a bug up there. All right. Why did he make? It's still up there. Why did he make you and everything else? Why did he make you and everything else? For his own glory. All right, let's pray. Lord God, I thank you so much for these awesome kids. And I thank you for the adults. And I thank you for songs that help us to memorize your word. I pray that they would hide your word in their hearts so that they can guard their hearts because it is the wellspring of life and so that they might not sin against you. And Lord, I, I pray that they would know that you made them. You made everything else and you made them and everything else for your own glory. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Can you all hear me okay? All right. This is the point where I tell you to talk amongst yourselves because I forgot my notes. <laughs> and I don't have it all here. singers that we have here at, at our church, and we are so thankful for them. Thank you that we could sing those songs. We, we long for you to come on the clouds, Lord. We praise your name, and, and we pray that, that everyone would come to praise your name. And Lord, now I, I pray that you would help us to deepen our understanding of what you did for us on the cross. What you went through, Lord, willingly, so that we could be in relationship with God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I pray that you would speak to the hearts of each person here by the same Holy Spirit that inspired the writing of these words. I do pray the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my rock. You are my redeemer. Speak to your people from your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Throughout Lent, we've had this sort of theme verse of Colossians 2, 6 through 7. Hear the word of the Lord. Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith. Psalm 22, 1 through 2. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Matthew 27, 45 through 50. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 5. I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. And finally, Hebrews 2b, by the grace of God, he, and he is Jesus, by the grace of God, Jesus tasted death for everyone. That is why he was given his crown. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be. There is a praise song that we sing here at the church from, from time to time. And the, the chorus is, Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, would die for me? You, you remember singing that. And that song starts out with this line. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. Hold that line in the, the back of your head. Back in November, out of all things, a Presbytery meeting, I heard a message. Ken Fabin was there. He got to hear it too. And the message was on what is of the most importance in our faith. And it was from 1 Corinthians 15. And he was talking about, the speaker was talking about how what is of first importance is Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Now we talk a lot about the death and the resurrection. But I have to confess to you, until I heard that sermon last November, the burial wasn't something I spent a lot of time thinking about. Keep that in the back of your mind. As we go through Lent, we've been talking about being rooted and grounded in Christ, specifically in the cross of Christ. I've said this each of the last few weeks. We live in very weird times. The winds of our culture are blowing strong. There's uh, like metaphorical explosions all around us in our culture. And we need to know and understand genuine biblical Christianity. And I have mentioned the last several weeks that Christianity is generally accepted and okay if it's crossless. But a crossless Christianity is not Christianity at all. It's an imposter. We've been looking at statements from an old confession, the Belgic Confession, and then we've been looking at the scriptures that are underneath those statements in the Belgic Confession, specifically chapters or articles, as they're called back then, 20 through 23. Today's focus on your front of your paper is these phrases in bold that you'll find from the Belgic Confession. Suffered the just for the unjust as well in his body as in his soul, 
feeling the terrible punishment which our sins had merited. He called out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, and hast suffered all this for the remission of our sins? So with that statement in mind, with the line from our praise song, I'm forgiven because you were forsaken, and thinking about this idea of Jesus' burial, today I pray that you and I will be grounded in this truth. Jesus willingly experienced desertion from God when he died on the cross and experienced death so we might know God now and forever. In response, may we live each moment in joyful thanksgiving. I want to talk first about what happened on the cross when Jesus is deserted by the Father. The scripture tells us that Jesus was constantly in communion with the Heavenly Father. Jesus said it himself, I and the Father are one. That's John 10, 30. Also in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, we read about Jesus saying, I can do only what I see the Father doing. In John 14, I can only do what the Father tells me to do. We see Jesus in the scriptures in communion with the Heavenly Father. He is affirmed and encouraged at his baptism. This is my son that I love, the voice says. At what is called the transfiguration, that same voice, this is my son. That is the reason this constant communion with God, that is the reason why Jesus is the perfect sacrificial lamb. He is without sin, and without sin, he can be connected to the Father. So thinking about that, and Jesus' constant communion with the Father, how awful is it? To hear him cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I looked up the Hebrew word translated forsaken, and it means deserted, left alone. Now Jesus wasn't just making up words on the cross, he was quoting Psalm 22. And we're going to look at that further, but before we do, I want to look at something else that happened right then at that time on the cross. From the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. Biblical scholars help us to understand that the day begins at, at 6 a.m. So the sixth hour is noon. And three hours later is three o'clock. So for those three hours from noon to three on this Friday afternoon, it says there is darkness over all the land. It reminds you of something that happened in the Old Testament. In Exodus 10, starting in verse 21. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, a darkness to be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was pitch darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the people of Israel had light where they lived. After that three days of darkness that you could feel, came judgment upon the Egyptians. But those that were covered by the blood of a lamb were secure. The death started at midnight. Here on Golgotha, three hours, not three days, of darkness starts at 
midday. And at the end, the Passover lamb's blood is spilled so that all those that are covered in his blood may live. At the end of those three hours of darkness, the New Testament isn't like the Old Testament. It doesn't say that it was a darkness that can be felt. But when have you ever experienced darkness between noon and 3 p.m.? You would have had to have realized something is happening. And at the end of those three hours, that communion, that connection that has always been there, ends. Now, we can't fully understand this. Because if you're thinking about this, you're well, wait, wait a minute. Did Jesus never ceased to be God when he was on the cross? There is a mystery here we'll never fully understand. But we do know something happened. Another praise song we sing says it this way. How great the pain of searing loss. The father turns his face away. Jesus is on the cross and there is no voice encouraging him. This is my son. There are no angels ministering to him like when he came out of the desert. He's been deserted. Out of love. For sinful people like you and me. I discovered that in our denomination, in the EPC, we have a really good resource. It's a pastor, a fellow pastor named Pat Garrett Dawson. I don't know him personally. He's an EPC pastor in Louisiana. And what much of what I learned today, I, I learned from reading stuff he has written. I want you to hear what he says about this break in the community. The one who from eternity had known the sweet, ecstatic joy of communion with the Father screamed, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Here we clap our hands over our mouth in sheer horror. God forsaken by God. Jesus went to the place, to the state, that the sin in each human heart leads. He went to the abandonment. The absolute loneliness that our incessant cries of my way, not your way, demand. He went to the hell we deserve in order that we might not have to. On the cross, Jesus descended into the Gehenna hell of separation from his Father. Now he used the word Gehenna hell because this quote is taken from a sermon where he's talking about the difference between the realm of the dead and the place of punishment. And that's what I'd like us to look a little bit at right now. First, we look at the fact that Jesus was deserted for us. Now we look at how Jesus experienced death for us. 1 Corinthians 15. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. He was buried. There's something that we struggle with when we read the Bible we talked about it when we had our chronological Bible study, but I wish we would have been had the time to look at it a little bit more. Because once I actually took the time to really kind of look at it, it's not as confusing as you think it is. And that is, in the Old Testament, you see this word, Sheol. And in the New Testament, you see this word, Hades. And then you also see the word, Hell. Well, it turns out, that Sheol is Hebrew, Hades is Greek. Just like Messiah is Hebrew, Christ is Greek. Sheol is Hebrew, Hades is Greek. And they're both describing what people at the time understood 
as the realm of the soul. Here's what Dawson says. It was the underworld realm of the dead, where the souls of the dead linger as shadows of their former selves, cut off from the praises of God. Sheol and Hades were not necessarily places of punishment and torture, but Sheol and Hades meant great diminishment. Dead souls did not have a robust life. They were, in a sense, imprisoned in a disembodied, shadowed world. Everyone whose body died ended up in this nether realm, this thin, bleak state. Now, just for fun, in the past, in English, both words were translated as hell, as was a third Greek word, Gehenna. Gehenna is the place of punishment for the condemned. And then we have that fun statement in the Apostles' Creed. He descended into hell, which actually comes from the Latin ad inferna, which also means realm of the soul. So here's what is true. Jesus died. His body is laid in that brand new tomb that's never been used. His soul goes to the realm of the dead. He descended into hell. Now keep in mind, we already said that on the cross, he experienced the Gehenna hell. He experienced the, the punishment, the separation. I'm forgiven because he was forsaken. He was deserted. So then on Saturday when he's buried, he tasted, or a better way to say it would be experienced, what every one of us will experience. Death. By the grace of God, Jesus tasted death for everyone. This is why he was given his crown. Now, I want to tell you something I learned. Jesus going to the realm of the dead, his being buried is really good news. It's really good news because of what I said at the beginning of the service. Almost every Sunday I say, there is nowhere we can go that we can hide from his presence. I take that from Psalm 139, verses 7 and 8. Jesus fulfilled that. Here's what it says. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in shield, you are there. He has been there. And listen to what Dawson writes about it. Jesus descended into death. He made all that darkness his own. Death captured Jesus as he entered it fully. But then, in the great reversal, Jesus captured death. In his rising, Christ filled that darkness with the light of his presence. He dispelled that gloom forever for those who trust him. So that when we consider the crossing into of death, we can now hold fast to the truth. Even darkness is not dark to you. Just as Jesus took our sins, so he has taken all our lonely dying as his own. Jesus tasted death. He defeated death. I never realized before that we take the whole weekend as a box set. Friday, the sacrifice, the being separated from the communion that we deserve Saturday, being buried, experiencing that, and then defeating it on Sunday, rising again. Wow. It's incredible. You might say, so what? The skeptic, and maybe us at times, we tempted to say, ah, Jesus' death is, 
That was just a result of tragic circumstances. And certainly it was. There were some tragic circumstances. There were some very unfair things. There were some very unjust things. Don't ever forget what Jesus said in John 10, verses 17 and 18. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down. I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. Jesus is often called the second Adam. The first Adam was asked to trust. Do whatever you want in this place. Just trust me on this. Don't eat from that one tree. And Adam said, no, I'm not going to trust that. I'm going to do things my way. The second Adam was actually tempted to do things his way. Save yourself, Jesus. If you're the Christ, save yourself. Come off that cross. The second Adam trusted God. My last quote from Garrett Dawson. In the paradise of Eden, Adam could not offer the little faithfulness of not eating the fruit. But at the place of the skull, on the rack of the cross, with no trace of his father's presence to be felt, with no expectation of a reply, Jesus prayed, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus, the second Adam, trusted God. I read you verses 1 and 2 of Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? From the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Now here are verses 3 through 5. Yet, you are holy. Enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. Put to shame. Jesus wasn't just quoting the first line of Psalm 22. He was pointing us to the whole psalm. And it's a psalm of pain and trust. Jesus trusted the Heavenly Father and willingly was the propitiation for our sin. We talked about that last week. Willingly experienced the punishment of hell, being separated from the one who loves him. Willingly was buried, where his soul went to the realm of the dead, and willingly defeated that realm of death and sin and the devil so that those who trust in him may have eternal life and shall not perish. Our job, the so what, is to live in joyful thankfulness. In, in all aspects of our life, in our work, in our recreation, in our education, in our leisure, in our family, to be joyfully thankful for what he did for us on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. To live thanking and praising him that we can know God. We can be in a relationship because of that weekend. I'll leave you with Charles Wesley's words. He left his father's throne above so free so infinite his grace. Emptied himself of all but love and bled for Adam's helpless race. Tis mercy all, immense and free. For oh my God, it found out me. Amazing love, how can it be? That thou, my God, shouldst die for me.
Jesus willingly experienced desertion from God when he died on the cross. And he experienced death so that we might know God now and forever. In response, may we live each moment in joyful thankfulness. Lord God, I pray that my words are correct, that I am understanding your scriptures correctly and explaining them correctly. And if so, I pray that those things would be remembered. If not, I pray that they would be forgotten and corrected. Lord God, I pray, Lord, that uh, we would understand the depth of what you have done for us. That you live the perfect life that, that every single one of us is incapable of. And the scripture tells us that that rebellious or sinfulness, the wages of that is death. That's what we deserve. The scriptures also tell us due to nothing that we can do, no, no amount of praying, no amount of worship, no amount of learning. There's nothing we can do to come back into your grace. That you pay that price and you simply tell us to repent and believe. And Lord, you tell us that as we do that, that we are your children. We are a royal subjects of a kingdom. And the king is the ruler of kings on earth. What a blessing, Lord. So I pray, Lord, if there's anyone here today that has never understood that relationship with you. Maybe they've heard about you. Maybe they know some facts and figures about you. But they've never had a relationship with you. I pray that today is the day they would turn to you, they would repent and believe that you died on the cross. And the Bible tells us we receive a, a new nature. We are a new creation. Your sons and your daughters. Lord, I know there's many here that they've understood that for a long time. They've been walking with you for a long time. I pray that today would just deepen their thankfulness. That, Lord, you would allow them to feel that communion that is possible because of what you did on the cross. And that we would joyfully live in thanksgiving in all that we say and all that we do. And that you would use us so that others might see you. And come to know you as well. Thank you, Lord. We love you and need you and praise you. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. We respond to God's word in a number of different ways. And one of them is to go to him in prayer. Uh, so we had a number of things to pray for uh, in Sunday school. I will mention a couple of them. We had been praying for uh, Mickey and, and Diane Mahaffey. And I think most of you have heard now that, that Diane passed away uh, earlier last week. Uh, so pray for those that uh, love them and care for them and their family and friends, which are many of you in this room. Uh, lift up the Mahaffey family. Uh, we are also pray, asked to pray for the Kincaid family. Uh, Charlene's relatives. Um, we praise God and continue to pray for Terry's wife, Shelly, who's getting better in the hospital. Um, and then we pray for just our um, our general society in general that seems to have trouble understanding basic uh, basic biology and things that are um, pretty common sense. Anything else to, to pray for? Um, continue to pray for Barbara Bird. I have not spoken to her, but she was supposed to have her surgery on Friday, so so she did. And uh, pray for the results. Um, and also for um, the Jews Club in uh, Hope Falls School District. Praying for Good News Club in Hopewell, which is through uh, child evangelism, and then also for Bob. Great. Um, I'd just like to thank everybody for the prayer 
prayers and um, cards and concerns over the last person in a year now. So I'm finally starting to turn the corner. I've overcome a couple of setbacks and uh, I'm starting to feel like a human being again. So I really appreciate everything everybody's done for us and uh, just keep praying and continue to heal. Praise God. I know there are folks within our congregation in different places traveling on the road, so we'll pray for that as well. Let's go to the Lord and pray again. Oh, wait, go ahead, Sharon. Uh, pray for my brother. He got recommended to Sunday school. He goes to the back of the doctor next Tuesday, and we're praying that he can uh, go ahead and have surgery and have a medical procedure. Uh, okay. We'll pray for your brother, too. Now let's pray. You are the holy, holy, holy God, that in and of our own strength we cannot be in the presence of, but because of the blood of Jesus, as we have faith in him, we, we can not only come into your presence as your sons and daughters, but you tell us, Lord, that, that you want us to cast our cares upon you. So you've heard all these things. I don't need to mention them again, Lord, but there's some, some family concerns. There's grieving of ones that have lost loved ones. We lift them up to you. And we praise you for how you do bring about healing. And we ask for that in those that are dealing with hospital stays or sickness. Lord, we pray for Betty Cole, and we thank you for her. We pray for Mitzi, and we thank you for her. Lord, we pray for our, our society. Lord, for um, wisdom. Wisdom, Lord, um, from you. Wisdom that, that people would, would see that, that you have made reality. Lord, I pray for wisdom for our leaders. We pray for us to be people of truth and grace and never separate. Lord, I pray for our preschool and thank you for the way that you are working in the lives of the kids over there. And I pray that you would give energy to the teachers and helpers. Lord, I pray for all of the teachers. As I got to experience that a little bit more this week, Lord, and I don't think we can ever thank them for what they do on a daily basis. So I pray for teachers, administrators, those who work in the schools. Lord, um, thank you. Please be with those who serve our country. Lord, please be with those missionaries, here and far away, that are proclaiming your word. Lord, we love you. We need you. We ask for your mercy and we ask for your grace. And we ask that you would hear us now as we come before you praying the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. We respond to God's word by giving of our time and our abilities and the resources he's given us in the first place. So I would invite the ushers to come forward and receive the tithes and offerings given in faith.
God, thank you so much for these gifts that have been given. I pray that you would provide for every need of your people. And I do pray that the message of Christ may go out throughout Western Pennsylvania and throughout your world. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Several announcements to highlight uh, real quick. First of all, we have lunch afterwards today. There is soup lunch. You might say I didn't bring anything. You didn't need to. Uh, come and join us and have fellowship uh, with lunch after the service. Tuesday, during our Bible study, uh, normally we tend to go to about 7 o'clock or so. We're going to end at 6.40 this week. Uh, there is a, a meeting at the school at Southside. It's the, the committee that is looking into this issue of pronoun use at the school and that whole policy. And uh, they have different topics. This particular one is on the Bible, and the public is welcome. And I'd like to go, and I know some others would like to go. And that starts at 7 at the, uh, at the um, library, I believe, of the high school. So uh, we'll end at 6.40 um, on uh, Tuesday night, start at 5 o'clock. Um, those of you that are helping with Kids Club, 2.30 at, at Mill Creek. Next Sunday is our service at the Lakeview Nursing Home at 3 o'clock. You're all welcome. That is an amazing time. Um, I'm going to put my wife on the spot. Because she could use your help on a um, thing called a real-life fair. So you want to tell them about that? <coughs> you about something exciting that we're looking forward to in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, we know things are really screwed up now with the school and pronouns, and one of our goals is to do outreach. That's what we should be doing as a church. So a group of us met a couple of weeks ago, uh, Ian and Danielle, Dana, uh, Jason Smith, Jefferson, Cindy Casey, the preschool teacher, and Michelle and me to see what could we do to maybe get to the youth, approach them at a young age to kind of bring them more into the church. So what we decided to do, we're going to do a four-week Sunday school starting the week after Easter. That would be from May or April 16th through May 7th, inviting the kids from the preschool and surrounding neighborhood kids, anyone you might know, to come to Sunday school. At the same time, Dana has been wanting to do a mother's program to get the young mothers together to talk about issues that might uh, affect them. So we decided to kill two birds with one stone, send out a, to the preschool and others, have the kids come to Sunday school, and at the same time have a mother's session that Dana would do, and Cindy's going to help her with that. Jefferson then decided, why don't we do something for the fathers as well? So we're inviting the whole family for a special session during Sunday school. We thought it'd be too intimidating for the adults to come into our Sunday school because we all sort of know each other. That's why we want to do this separately for them, to get them engaged. Uh, Danielle made a nice survey, three questions to send out to the preschool, asking them if they're interested and what mothers might want to talk about and the fathers might want to talk about. We're going to send it to other families in the church. And if you know of anyone that might be interested as well, we'd like to send it to them and get this kicked off. So we're excited about it. So far, the survey went out Thursday. We've had four responses. Three said no. That's fine. One family said yes. So we're hoping that this will get a little bit of energy and, and get started here. <clears throat> we're also having preschool Sunday on uh, uh, Palm Sunday. The families will be dropping the kids off at 1015. 
So we're going to stop Sunday school a little bit early, adult Sunday school, so we can interact with them, have a continental breakfast, and we'll explain the program to them. So those that are agreeing to come might give them positive reinforcement. Others might decide to come themselves. So hopefully we can all join and welcome them. To, you know, it's intimidating to come to a church. 30 years ago, Michelle and I came here, and Don McCoy had a cup of coffee. It was, it was so relaxing. He was so outreach to us. And we got to remember that when other people come in. And we also had Ray Kramer. We met her in the food cupboard. <clears throat> we didn't need the food. We saw her there. <laughs> and she was so outgoing. So it's just important to remember that when these people come in, let's be open to them and, and work with them. So we want to let you know what's happening. We're excited about it. So pray for it and hopefully we'll kick something off. And that goes for anyone that's here too that, that has little ones. Uh, everyone not just the preschool, everyone is invited to this, and I'm, I'm so thankful to the Lord that he's moving and, and, and bringing this up. Tom? Yeah, um, because of all that activity that's happening on the first Sunday in April, we have changed our opinion. Would you like to talk about that? Yeah, that's a, I appreciate you remembering that. So yes, we are, are normally we have communion on the first Sunday of every month. You're kind of in that routine. We are actually going to change that in April, and there's going to be two opportunities. That first on Monday, Thursday, at our Monday, Thursday service, um, where we will do the intention, but the Diana is making gluten-free bread for everybody, because uh, there's a few people that need that. And so we'll all have that opportunity on Monday, Thursday, and then Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, we'll have communion um, as well. So not on the first Sunday of the month. Thanks. All right, any other announcements? Well, let's stand. Our closing song just takes us right back to the, the focus we want to never forget, the old rugged cross.
the benediction will act as our blessing, our thankfulness for our food. So whenever the food is, is ready, we can start eating and enjoy that together. But don't forget that Jesus was deserted on the cross, willingly tasted death so that you and I don't have to. And through what he did on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we can be in relationship with God now and forever. So may we share that as we leave from this place. Now receive the benediction. Lord bless you and keep you. Or make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.